In our country, today is Labor Day. According to the United States Department of Labor website, Labor Day is a creation of the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It constitutes a yearly national tribute to the contributions that workers have made to the strength and prosperity and well-being of our country. Simply put, it is intended to be a day of rest and recognition to the American workforce. But the Christian also has a Labor Day, one in which we will receive a rest and recognition for the faithful work that we've done. When God completed his grand creation in Genesis 1 and 2, he rested on the seventh day and he blessed and sanctified it as a day of rest. The writer of Hebrews says that there remains a rest for the children of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Hebrews 4 verses 10 and 11. Friends, Jesus calls us to this rest. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. But the ultimate rest here has reference to the eternal labor day of God's children in his home. Sure, Jesus took time to rest and relax while here on this earth, but it was never for an extended period of time. No, in fact, he said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for the night is coming when no one can work, John 9 and verse 4. But notice what the voice from heaven said to John in Revelation 14 and verse 13. It said, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. But also, I want you to pay close attention to the qualifying statement here, those who die in the Lord. Friends, those outside of Christ, when death comes, will not enter into his rest, nor will they ever know rest, not for all of eternity. So how is this to be accomplished? Well, first, we must hear the word of God, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10 and verse 17. But also, for we know that without faith it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. We must also be willing to repent. To repent means that we turn away from our sinful life. And the reason this is, is because God now commands all men everywhere to repent, Acts 17 and verse 30. To repent means that we take our sights off of the world. We set our sights on things above. No longer are we devoted to the things of this life, but our focus is upon those spiritual things. Also, we must be willing to confess that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus said, if you confess my name before men, I will confess your name before my Father which is in heaven. And this concept of confession is not just a one-time thing. This is something that we should be doing every moment of every day. In everything that we say and do, we should be constantly professing to the world around us that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But none of these things will put us into Christ. So how is it that we get into Christ so that we may die in the Lord? Well, notice carefully what is said in Galatians 3 and verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, if you've not done these things, please consider taking these actions today. Please consider doing the things that are required in order to be able to enter into that eternal rest when this life comes to an end. Contact us at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ, and we would love to assist you in getting your life right with God.
Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.